What's up, YouTube? So, uh, yesterday we had Jude diagnosing Nissan Murano for suspension clunks in the rear. And when he brought the vehicle in on a swing arm lift, it's called a swing arm lift, the suspension preloaded in the rear and probably wedged and jammed and he couldn't find the problem. Uh, so then he moved it over to the drive on and still couldn't find it because he you know, thought it was links or shocks or something like that So after him on two different lifts and still not being able to evaluate it uh, I said oh, go do something else. Let me take a take a look at it. He's like, got a weird a weird brake pull, too And I was like, okay, so I take it for a ride I hit the brakes and I could feel that something was stepping out either the rear tires were stepping out Either the front tires were stepping out, either both. I wasn't sure. And what happened is when you hit the brakes, right? You're driving down the road straight, you hit the brakes, the car's like, whoa. So at that point, I wasn't sure if it was, you know, multiple uh, brake issues at different wheels. Um, uh, and I said, okay, I need to get it back in the shop and take a look at it. Um, and then once I got up in air and started um, more of a visual inspection, I did not expect the rear subframe in a Nissan Murano to be rotted out to the point where where it mounts to the body. It was doing this on both sides as you brake. So then we call it, you know, used car dealer, and he's actually here today. And said, hey man, uh, if you're going to commit to this car, because it came right from the auction, and it was a green light car, they said there's nothing wrong with this car. Um, to send us a video of the problem. So he, you know, gets in the car and they send him a video and he hit the brakes because I told him what's happening. The rear is stepping out because it's rotted out. They said, well, that could be from many different things. You guys aren't at the auction. You think you're experts, but you're more of con artists and bullshit and liars. And what you're hoping to do is to deter your, your customers because these are your customers who spend thousands and thousands or if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on cars. And you continually try to cheat them. And, and I see it all the time. Uh, your, re your service department says it's a green light car. The tranny's wiped. The motor's shot. The list goes on and on. The frame's rotted out. Your service department who, who, set, who evaluates these cars, you need to step those guys up. Because they're horrible. And then put it back on the seller. Say, hey, dude, we can't sell this car. What do you want to do? You want to fix it or do you want to take it back? You know? So then what you do is you wind up raising the prices and criteria... Uh, from 300 to 500 to 900 just to keep your used car dealers keeping your hands on their throats right so you sell them this garbage right because the auction is selling you the garbage you're buying it from them they're saying it's good and then the car is not bad and then you refuse to take it back um, somebody needs to do something about these guys it's not right that you treat your customers like this when they buy something uh, you should acknowledge that there's a problem uh, and understand that your guys aren't that great of mechanics who are saying these cars are green light. Um, and there's also mystery issues with cars. I've gotten cars that have been fine, and the next time I get them, there's no transmission, no gears. I mean, that just happens, dude. Or engine light's not on, all the monitors are set, go for another road test or start the car back up. It's got an EVAP code or a knock sensor or who knows what kind of code. There's things called that shit happens too that, you know, are ghost. Um, and I get it, your, your technicians can't spend, or even your evaluators can't spend hours and days in these cars to say, hey, this is a green light car, it's ready to go. Um, but then to torture the guy and say, well, that could be from anything. Well, his master technician who specializes in use car recondition says the rear subframe's completely rotted out, and that's a safety issue. But you said the car's fine. How your guys didn't notice the rear subframe missing, uh, rusted out when they hit the brake, the car's changing lanes um, is a concern. Um, you should trace that back to the guy who checked the car and fire his ass because um, that could have killed somebody or multiple people. But that's to tell your, you, you tell your used car dealer who spends tons of money with you weekly. This is my point. They spend tons of money, Mr. Auction Shops, with you weekly. And all you try and do is screw them over more and more and more and more. That's not fair. Uh, because you're monopolizing this industry. But somebody's going to come along and treat their customers right and guess what? You're going to be out of business because that's how it happens. Um, and you put it back on, your, on the people who are selling the car. Like, hey, dude, this car's jacked up. What do you want to do? Buy the car back? You want to fix it? What's your plans? They used to do that. But now now they're like, oh, we'll just keep raising the floor on the cost of the concerns with the vehicle. So 500 750 900 Fuck it. You might as well make it $10,000. they will never return a car. 
There you go. And then when they have a problem, you're like, oh, I can buy this from China online for $6. And the labor is an hour and a half. Come on, dude. The real shops out here aren't working like that. That's another unfair practice. It's like, oh, well, we're only going to pay internet use price that you can't get anywhere. To, to fall under the guidelines that you set forth on returning a vehicle for a dollar amount. Ridiculous. So once we get this car back up in the air, we're going to show you uh, live um, what this what this auction has done to this customer. And it's a big auction. It's not a little one. Thanks for watching.